Hello, Ray Phoenix here. Welcome to Let's Play Spire the Dragon Part 14. So first of all, we're going to do in this Dreamweaver's world is going to be the Dark Passage level. This is level where all the Halloweenish, demented, demonic creatures this game has to offer are suddenly dumped right in front of us into a scary, dark level. Like, ooh, it's dark, so it's scary. There's all sorts of scary-looking creatures in this level. They're not as so much scary as how they look, really. It's more because of what they do to Spyro. Some there's like these little cute, innocent little turtle things that are immortal to Spyro's flame, but they can easily be killed by Spyro charging into him. But even then, they can still take have a, They're like snapping turtles. They have a really powerful punch on Spyro. Look at that thing. It's like, what the hell is that thing, anyways? It's like he turned to like a giant, like, looks like a giant wind turbine or something like that. Only it's like one of the, only it's like con contained in like a cylinder thing, like a cylindrical mouth thing. What is that supposed to be? Who dreamed of that? Look at those demonic creatures as well too. But then they turn to turtles, which they're still pretty just as, which they're still pretty like, still pretty like hostile as turtles. Because they can just go and jump and bite Spyro so many times like that. It's, it's much faster and Spyro moves. Spyro isn't fast enough to kill one of those things a lot of the time. Well, the things those things are going to be getting the better of Spyro. Of course, there's still going to be a fair share of dragons in this level. There's still all these dragons to rescue. What a level in this game be like without dragons to rescue, of course. There's still plenty of gems to collect, and this level also likes to hide gems from us. So I guess this is actually a part of all the other levels of this game. What else do you expect? It's Spyro the Dragon. What else do you expect for a Spyro for a level in Spyro the Dragon? Of course, it's gonna have stuff that's nearly impossible to find. It's gonna roam around for a lot and try to look for those remaining gems. I bet I could go to Nasty's world right now and just go take on Nasty Nork right now because of how many requirements I have. We probably could just beat the game right now. But I'm not going to do that because there's still a lot of stuff to be collected in this game. So I don't have to do any backtracking. So it is possible to play for this game without backtracking. That's exactly what I intend to do. I stay true to my word that I'm going to, you know, play this whole game without backtracking. So you can see you can jump off this ledge here. I could glide to those different ledges around there, which could take you to different parts of the This is taking us back to somewhere I've already been before. Yeah, I'm just going there to get some health. As much from things jumping around gives Spyro health. There's another ledge over there in the far distance. There's some gems. You can kind of spot gems in the far distance. You can see shiny, sparkling things Thank off in the far distance, and gems usually look like that. It's actually somewhat easy to spot gems in far distances, but of course, sometimes you have to know where gems are to begin with to look to know where to look for them, which is an easy claw of time. You don't even know where gems are a lot of the time. You might not even know that whole part of the level exists. A lot of the time, old well, levels actually could be a lot longer than you realize. I'm ready to get fooled by that a lot when I was a kid, thinking that a level is actually a lot smaller. Yeah, it's a very small level, but it's actually not. It's actually really large, one of the biggest levels in this game. This probably is one of the biggest levels in this game. It doesn't look like it a lot of times. You're pretty much running off this on a preset track. It's almost like a Crash Bandicoot level because it's because you're following a preset track and fighting enemies and just collecting what's on the track. There's not as much exploration. It doesn't seem like exploration a lot of time, but really, it's a lot of exploration. It's this exploration that's confined to. It's almost like it's on rails or something like that. There's gems everywhere, of course. There's a dragon to be collected, and there's there's like one of those container things that can be destroyed if that fireworks thing we can send at it. But we have to jump up there, and Spyro can't jump high enough. This is our dragon that's praising us again, saying, Oh, you're going to be the one to defeat Nasty Nork. Yeah, of course we're going to defeat Nasty Nork. Who else is going to do it? A plumber in a spandex shirt and blue overalls? A blue hedgehog? A guy with no arms and no legs, but has hands and feet that magically float around him? Who else is going to take on this thing? Of course it's not going to be them, of course it's going to be Spyro. Spyro would just simply destroy all of them by flaming them. He could barbecue anything that comes in that comes up to him. And those fools seem to be resistant to bar being barbecued. What if I was supposed to make a statement on how ignorance is bliss or something like that, or how fools are so dumb and somehow they survive by dumb luck or something like that? Kind of like saying that would happen in Dumb and Dumber or something like that. I remember, I remember when I first told people about Dumb and Dumber, they imagine it would have something to do with Tweedledee and Tweedledum. But I kind of thought of that too. I kind of thought, yeah, it probably does have something to do with Tweedledee and Tweedledum, knowing nothing about the movie. But then it's like, oh, it's, it's this. That's not to do this. This is Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels playing these dumb guys that have to go on a trip to Haspen. And that's kind of what this game is a bit like, too. It's Spyro going on a trip to find where Nasty Nork is and defeating him so he can save the dragon world. And while he's at it, he's going, he's going on a trip to collect every single thing in the game. So this almost is like a road trip, but like a road trip kind of, um, 
kind of game, but it's set in, but it's set in like a magical world. And there's no car, of course, there's no roads. Just Spyro doing it on foot. And so people did road trips before cars were invented. They just did it all on foot. What? They just walked from point A to point B. It would take days a lot of time. And again, for a lot of people playing this game for the first time around, it would realistically take up to several days to beat this game or to get absolutely everything in this game. Sometimes even years, a years long adventure. No wonder why they keep talking about this game like it's an incredible adventure or a remarkable experience that we're that we're, that we're that we're going through this whole adventure. I give a medal to anyone that can figure this game out by himself. I'll admit I can figure this game out by myself. That's why I had to go and look up guides. I looked up a lot of guides on this game to teach me how to get through this game or how to find those hidden gems and, and eventually dig this game 100% complete, of course, because if I never got this game 100% complete before, I wouldn't be doing this let's play right now. Of course not. I think around here somewhere, there's another ledge that we're missing somewhere around here, I think. It must be around, where is it? Oh yeah, there it is. It's right there. Yeah, I remember there was a, um, we've been to the ledge before, but there was actually like a hidden, one of those hidden whirlwind things over here where we could go and send us up to a higher elevation. But I still think there were some other gems around here we didn't get before. Now the enemies are back and this time they're giving us those white orbs, which are actually really helpful, actually. If you get a lot of them, you can get a one-up. They all start like, they actually are very similar to what the coins are in Super Mario Brothers. And they only show up after you've, 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 you've killed enemies you've killed before and already collected their gems. Link down here, yeah, see there's a hidden ledge down there. It's completely in your blind spot. There's no way you would have seen that. Unless you jumped down and fell to your death. It's almost like that, that hidden secret in Twisted Metal 2 in the New York City level, where you can only find the, 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 path, the cheat code or password, whatever you want to call it, that unlocks Sweet Tooth if you drive off the edge of the building and fall to your death and plummet to your death. That's the only way you could find... That's the only way you could the way you could find the cheat code to unlock Sweet Tooth in Twisted Metal 2 by killing yourself. I bet a lot of people probably had to kill themselves several times to find out and do everything in this game simply by jumping off the ledge. But I I, I haven't really needed to do as much of that because I already know everything about this game and people already did it for me. So why do someone else's work? <laughs> I have things over. People already examined this game. I'm sure, people already did exact complete total complete total dissections of this game long before I even knew it existed. I mean, I always knew this game must have existed, because I knew about Spyro 2 long before I knew about this game. I knew that if a game has two in its title, it's probably a sequel to something else. So there probably was a Spyro 1 then. Thanks, but what was Spyro 1 like? I'd love to help you That's what I didn't know. It's also like one of those mystery things that kids may know it exists, but they don't actually know what it is kind of thing, or don't actually know what actually happened in it. It was always one of those secret taboo mystery things to me. Same with Spyro 3. I was aware there was a Spyro 3 as a kid. I mean, I first heard of it actually long after I beat Spyro 2. But I did eventually become aware it existed. But again, I had no idea how, where it was or how I could find it or I could get Spyro 3. So I would speculate a lot of the time what it could have been like. What could this be like? What could a game possibly be like? You know it exists. Yes, never seen it before, but nowadays there aren't very many stones that are left unturned now. I pretty much know about almost every game there is on the PS1. Or will eventually know, because there's not much left for me to discover on the PS1. I have PS1 definitely holds a record for having more games than any other system that I own. I own so many PS1 games. I have walls filled with PS1 games. I you made a video about that three years ago. And that video is still Thank pretty current. Now, even though I made that video three years ago, it's still pretty current today, actually, because I don't really get very many physical PS1 games anymore. So it's pretty much the same then as it was. Now, I never used to make video game collection videos when I was a kid. That's because I knew my collections grow all the time and change all the time. So I can make a video of it now, but it's probably going to become dated very soon, and I didn't want it to become horribly dated. So I thought I'll just wait years in the future for when I have a lot of games. And that did eventually happen. I have so many games. Some games I even forgot I had. Like, the other day when I was uploading the, the Spyro videos to archive.org, the raw footage for his Let's Play, it took over 30 hours for my computer to, what, to, up, to upload all the raw footage of this Let's Play to archive.org. Then afterwards, it gave me links, like, like related video links to other things to upload to archive.org, but specifically raw footage. It was back in 2019 when I uploaded a lot of raw footage. Of, of me playing PS1 games. I actually found footage I recorded my actual PS1 back in 2018 of me filming it in my grandma's basement where I played Bust, what was it called? Bubble Bobble, the original Bubble Bobble on PS1. 
kind of odd. It's not really a collection. It's just a disc that has, has um, Bubble Bobble and Rainbow Island, I think is what it's called. It has two versions. It has both versions of Rainbow Island. It has the original version, the remastered version, and the original Bubble Bobble. Because people often consider Rainbow Island to be the true sequel to Bubble Bobble. And then I remember that was a video I uploaded to YouTube back in 2018 in my pre-antiquity days. Back when the only enemy I had back in those days was Tammy Newborn. And he actually commented on that video saying that it sucks. I don't think it sucks, but what is he to say? This is Ray Phoenix signing out.